Hey y'all, welcome back and thanks for stopping by. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Stephanie and today's video is going to be my last holiday themed video for this year, but I think it's going to be a fun one. I'm going to show y'all how I made four super easy DIY gift ideas for those hard to shop for people on your list this year. Let's go ahead and jump right into my favorite DIY from today's video, DIY number one. For this project, I started with this wooden tray that I'd picked up last spring at the Dollar General. I'd used this for a centerpiece previously, so I'd already stained it with Krylon Chalky Finish Antiquing Wax in the color Dark Vintage. I used this faux grass table runner for the turf of the football field. I found this one online earlier this year and it was fairly cheap. If I can find it again and remember where I got it from, I will leave a link to it in the description box below. To cut the table runner long enough to fit into the bottom of the tray, I flipped it over so that the rubber backing was facing upwards and put the tray on top making sure the edges were flush. Once I had the tray positioned on the table runner, I took a marker and marked along the edge. Now, if you don't want to use the faux grass for the turf, you can always paint the bottom of the tray green and it'll work just fine. I used a sharp utility knife and just a little bit of pressure to cut through the table runner. Since the table runner was just a little bit wider than the tray, I went ahead and flipped that piece back over and set the tray back on top making sure that all the edges were flush. Then I took the marker and drew along the long edge of the tray so that I could cut that piece off so that it would fit nice and snug down in the tray. Once I had the piece cut to size, I placed it inside the tray to make sure that it would fit nice and snug. When I was happy with the way the turf fit inside the tray, I went ahead and removed it and flipped it upside down. Next, I took some masking tape that is roughly two inches wide and taped off one end of the turf. This is what's going to be the end zone for the football field. I used two pieces of the masking tape to get it as wide as I wanted it to be, but you can make it as wide as you want it to be. I cut along the edge of the masking tape with a utility knife and then repeated the process on the other side to get the other end zone. Now if you don't want to custom paint the end zones, this step is completely unnecessary and you can go ahead and skip to putting in the goal post. I used a light coat of Krylon Fusion spray paint in the color Satin White to prime the end zones for their future color. Once the primer coat was completely dry on the end zones, I went ahead and painted one with Krylon spray paint in the color Red Pepper and the other with Rust-Oleum spray paint in the color Gloss Purple. I chose these two colors to represent my family's two favorite college football teams, but y'all can choose any color you want to represent y'all's favorite teams. I picked up this finger football game from Dollar Tree and that's what I'm going to be using for the goal post and for the finger footballs. Now I was not a big fan of the orange color of these goal posts so I went ahead and painted them white. I was going to spray paint them with the Rust-Oleum spray paint in the color satin white but because of our weather I did end up going ahead and using a couple coats of Waverly chalk paint in the color white. Once the end zones were completely dry I went ahead and reassembled the field back inside the tray making sure all the pieces were put in the correct place and turned the right way. To put the goal post in place, I centered one of the posts in the middle of the end zone and pressed down firmly to leave a mark on the turf. Once I had the mark on the turf, I went ahead and removed it and used a utility knife to cut an X shape in the rubber backing. Next, I placed the goal post through the hole in the end zone and replaced the bottom part of the stand. Once I had the goal post in place in the end zone, I went ahead and used a generous amount of hot glue on the stand as well as in the bottom of the tray. I then replaced the end zone and pressed down firmly until the glue set up. The bottom of the goal post is a suction cup, so you will have to press down firmly until the glue sets up in order for it to set down flat. I then repeated these steps to install the other post in the other end zone. And that was it for this one. It was super quick and easy to do. And I just included the two finger footballs from the game and it was ready to go. I'm absolutely thrilled with how this little mini football field turned out. I think it is adorable and perfect for any football fan. Today's video is part of a playlist full of unusual Christmas gift ideas. I was honored when Tammy from Happiness Created, Jackie from Crafting in Mimi's World, and Amanda from Six Kids and a Glue Gun asked me to guest host this playlist. These women are extremely talented, so if you haven't checked out their channels yet, you won't be disappointed. I'll leave a link to their channels as well as a link to the playlist in the description box down below so you can get even more unusual gift ideas. Let's go ahead and get started with DIY number two. For this project, I started with five of these wooden boxes with the drawers from Dollar Tree. I decided to use Christmas themed dad jokes for the scavenger hunt clues. It's kind of a thing between my son and I with the dad jokes, so I thought it would be fun to include them as part of his Christmas gift. 
I just went to Google and typed in Christmas dad jokes and picked out five I like best and that I could use as clues to lead him from one place to the other. You can use any clues you want and as many as you want. You can make your own or go to Google and search for scavenger hunt clues and find hundreds of them. Once I had the five jokes that I wanted, I went ahead and wrote them down on a piece of regular printer paper and folded them up and put one in each box. Since my son's a teenager and likes to solve riddles and things like that, I did not include the answers with the clues. I'm going to make him work for his gift this year, but if you have younger children, you could definitely include the answers on the back of the clues. Once I had all the clues placed in their boxes, I took a package of tissue paper that I picked up at Walmart with five different designs and wrapped each one of the boxes in a different tissue paper. I even made up a little cheat sheet for myself so that I would know what box held what clue and where it should be hidden. If you wanted to use wrapping paper instead of tissue paper, you could do that as well. I just happened to have this tissue paper on hand. However, I would definitely recommend doing each box in a different paper for your sanity and to have a cheat sheet made up. We've been doing scavenger hunts for Easter for years, and I've found that it makes things go so much smoother if you can distinguish one from the other and have a guide handy. And that's it for this one. I can't wait to see my kiddo's reaction when he finds out I'm sending him on another treasure hunt. Moving right along to DIY number three. For this project, I used a candle measuring cup and some pre-made wax from Walmart, along with some silicone candy molds from Walmart and Dollar Tree. If you wanted to, you could also use the large candles from Dollar Tree or some unscented wax like I have here that I got from Amazon and add scents and colors of your choosing. I have some Southern style scents that I got from Amazon, as well as several candle dyes also from Amazon. For this first set of wax melts, I'm only gonna fill up the four candy canes in the mold. So I took three of the spicy cinnamon stick wax cubes and added them to the measuring cup. I created a double boiler on my stove using a large saucepan and a small saucepan and some water. Once the water was boiling, I put the measuring cup with the wax cubes in the top pan with just a little bit of the water and let the wax melt. Now this is my first time doing it this way and I'm no professional by any means, but this worked for me. Just be careful if you choose to do it the same way that I did. Once the wax was completely melted, I carefully removed it from the stove and poured it into the candy cane molds and then I set them aside to harden for a couple of hours. Since I didn't have any brown pre-made wax, I went ahead and used some of the unscented white wax that I had on hand from Amazon and put a little bit in the measuring cup and again put it on the double boiler to melt. Once the wax was completely melted, I added some of the brown candle dye and mixed it really well with a wooden skewer. Then to scent the wax, I used several drops of the pecan pie fragrance oil and mixed it well. I carefully poured it into the gingerbread men molds and set them aside to harden for a couple of hours. Once the wax was completely hardened after a few hours, I went ahead and popped them out of the molds. If any of the wax melts had any extra wax in areas that it didn't need to be in, I took some small scissors and went ahead and trimmed it up. Here's a look at all the wax melts that I made. To package up the wax melts, I used this pack of six treat boxes that I picked up at Walmart. I also used some of this Easter grass that was the shredded paper, but you can pick it up all times of the year at Dollar Tree or Walmart in any color you want. I put some of the shredded paper in the bottom of the treat box and arranged the wax melts on top. Once I had the wax melts in place, I placed the treat box in one of the bags that came with it and used a silver string that also came in the kit to tie it closed. I then took one of the tags that came with the kit and wrote down what each scent was and tied it onto the string and finished it all off with a shoestring bow. And that was it for this one. I think these turned out so cute. And for it being my first time making them and me not being a professional, I think they turned out great. What do you think? And last but not least, DIY number four. For this project, I used one of these charger plates from Dollar Tree and took it outside and gave it one good coat of Krylon Fusion spray paint in the color gloss black. I do kind of wish I would have had a flat black paint, but this is the only thing I had on hand. Once the paint on the charger was completely dry, I brought it back inside and used Gorilla Glue and hot glue to attach one of the large black wire trash cans from Dollar Tree to the center of the charger. When using hot glue and a stronger adhesive such as E6000, or in this case, the Gorilla Glue that I'm using, be careful not to let the two glues mix because they will counteract each other and it will end up in one giant mess. 
After letting the Gorilla Glue set up for a few hours, I went back in and reinforced the bottom with a generous amount of hot glue. To begin decorating the hat, I took one of these 99 cent red and black buffalo check handkerchiefs from Hobby Lobby and removed the tag. I then folded it long ways about three times and wrapped it around the base of the hat or the bottom of the trash can using a generous amount of hot glue to hold it in place. You'll notice here that it doesn't go all the way around the base of the trash can, but that didn't matter to me because I was going to add florals to the area to cover it up. If it bothers you, you can add another one of the handkerchiefs to cover it up. When I had the handkerchief glued into place, I took three of these 98 cent floral picks from Walmart and began arranging them on the side of the hat to cover up the area where the handkerchief was too short. I did end up using three full picks, but I did cut them apart as needed to arrange the florals in a way that I was happy with. I would have preferred to use flocked greenery here, but I did not have any in my stash and I didn't have enough time to run to the store to get any. Once I had those in place, I decided it needed a little more red, so I took some of the mistletoe from Dollar Tree and added a few of the leaves and the berries. Here's how the florals looked once I was finished. To help this look a little more like Frosty's hat and so that you couldn't see through the trash can, I took two pieces of black tissue paper from Walmart and put it around the inside. I tried to smooth it out as much as possible so that when you looked at it from the outside, it looked like fabric. Now if you wanted to, you could use fabric for this step and looking back, I kind of wish I would have used a black velvet. Once I had the tissue paper inside the trash can and it was as smooth as possible, I went back and folded in all the edges so that it would look nice and neat. I did not like the gap that was left between the tissue paper and the trash can, so I did end up going back and using a tiny bit of hot glue along the rim of the trash can and tacking down the tissue paper. Once the tissue paper was tacked into place, this gift basket was finished and it was time to start filling it up. I put in two packages of the wax melts that I made in the last DIY and then included a wax warmer. Once I had all the items in the basket, I added more of the black tissue paper to cover up the contents. And that was it for this one, y'all. Here's a quick look at the finished gift basket. I absolutely love how this one turned out. It was so quick and simple, but looks so pretty. Best part is after the gifts are removed, it can be used as a winter decoration the rest of the season just by putting some gorgeous winter florals in the top of the hat. What do y'all think about this one? Here's one final look at all of today's gift ideas. Which one was your favorite? I have to say I love them all, but the little football field is hands down my favorite. I know these really aren't all that unusual, but I do think they are all very unique and very easy to personalize for the recipient. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help out my channel. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, what are you waiting for? Click that little red button and stick around for a while. There's lots of fun projects on the way. Don't forget to check out the host channels in the playlist all of which will be in the description box below and I am planning on taking a short break after this video to spend some much needed time with the family but I will be back in a couple of weeks. Thanks for watching and I'll see y'all next time.